t taking a long, long historical perspective uh, and focusing mainly on the continent of sub-Saharan Africa, there was a view that you know, African animal agriculture systems and African crop livestock systems weren't sufficiently well integrated. They didn't use machinery services from animals such as animal traction uh, or, or cartage. Uh, they didn't use manure for soil fertility. Uh, they didn't use animals for such tasks as plowing uh, and weeding, cultivation in general, uh, and that productivity of African agriculture could have been increased by introducing mechanization in the form of animal traction and by introducing integration of animals and crops on the same farm uh, under the rubric of what was broadly called mixed farming. So one thing that we looked at uh, in this book was to look at these hypotheses about the introduction of mechanization into mixed farming in sub-Saharan Africa, the extent of mixed farming, why mixed farming occurred, why it didn't occur, where it was prevalent, where it was. So we looked at such hypotheses as animal disease. Did the tsetse fly pre prevent the introduction of, uh, of using animals in cropping? Uh, was, there, was there a lack of mechanical skills? Uh, was animal traction or was cultivation with machines, either using animals or using diesel engines, uh, profitable or unprofitable? Were there environmental factors such as soil types and rainfall, uh, population density and ac access to markets that promoted or discouraged various forms uh, of mixed farming, mixed farming using animals, mixed farming using uh, engines such as tractors. It's fair to say that the agricultural systems, uh, the, the pastoral systems uh, in particular, were not, were not very well studied. I mean, there had been a fair amount of anthropological work uh, done by the colonial anthropologists in West Africa and in East Africa on pastoral systems, on agricultural systems in general. Uh, there was a good deal of work done on veterinary health aspects done by the, by the colonial vets, um, especially the French. Um, but as far as the basic ecology, you know, the soils, uh, the water management issues, the plant production issues, the possibility of introducing exotic plants, this, uh, the interactions between farming systems or cropping systems and livestock systems this was not particularly well understood. A picture of African animal agricultural systems became clear in the 70s, the 80s, and the early 90s uh, that had never existed before then. Uh, and so now this knowledge is, is available. Uh, and and you know, it's quite a scientific achievement, although because of, if you will, environmental reasons, basically the low productivity of inherent in arid areas, it's been more difficult to translate those into productivity, those, that new knowledge into productivity increases. Well, uh, it gives you some idea of, first of all, what has been tried and what has, uh, what has worked and what has not. You know, I mean, there, when, when ILRAD was started in, in the early 70s, it was thought that there would be a second generation ECF vaccine straight away. Remember there was the old, there was the initial ECF vaccine that had been developed in Kenya uh, in, in the 70s. We thought there would be a second generation vaccine. Well, it's still been difficult to achieve. It was thought that within 10 years or so, there would be a TRIPS vaccine. Uh, although the initial, I believe it was the two initial external reviews of ILRED said, well, it's not working out and it may be more difficult than we thought. And still today, there is, there isn't one, but they were very significant. But despite these, I won't necessarily call them failures, let's despite these long gestation times, if you will, uh, there has been a lot of new knowledge on bovine immunology as just shown in the chapter by Sam Black and Cynthia Baldwin in the book. And it's is shown in Sam Black's uh, chapter on the history of TRIPS research also in the book. There's been a lot of applied knowledge on TRIPS control campaigns. The TRIPS control campaigns have been exhaustively studied. The book, uh, for space reasons, doesn't do justice to all of them, but it discusses them uh, in one of Delia's chapters uh, on that. And so 
get what can work, what's, you know, what's necessary for sustainability of trips uh, control campaigns uh, in the absence uh, of a vaccine. So there, there's, in the whole area of disease control, uh, disease prevention on the vaccine side, uh, control and management uh, on the non-vaccine side, there's been you know, quite a substantial body of knowledge generated over the, the first half century uh, of these two institutions that merged uh, in 1995. Agriculture is not macroeconomics. Macroeconomics, you can download the data, you can run some regressions, you can do some simulation models, that's macroeconomics. You don't have to leave your house these days. You don't have to leave your library or your university. But agriculture is different. You have to go out and look. You know, I mean, uh, you know it's the old story of the Italian priest. The Italian priest said, well, you know, if, if there's an earthquake in Hawaii, uh, I know it immediately. But if I want to know how many bicycles there are in my village, I have to go out and count them. 